Preparation Academy. And when he was in school one day, while they were offering a vaccination clinic, he was vaccinated without his mother's consent, let alone knowledge, with a COVID-19 injection. It was an express uh, contradiction to his mother's wishes, to her withholding of consent, and actually his pediatricians and doctors' recommendations. Uh, ever since that incident, and I will allow Ms. Dorothy to explain further what's going on with her son, we have heard nothing from the Los Angeles Unified School District. We have not heard nothing from any officials at the Barack Obama Global Preparation Academy. We have asked them, we have given them notice of their claims of what happened. They are perfectly aware of what happened at a school vaccination clinic run on their campus under their safe return to school policy, and no one has responded to any of our claims, any of our requests to speak or to meet with them. And so today we are announcing that we will be filing a lawsuit, another lawsuit against the Los Angeles Unified School District, against Barack Obama Preparation Academy, and every single bad actor that implemented these policies and then rolled them out into fruition to injure students such as Moises, because do not be fooled that he is not the only one who has been vaccinated, vaccinated and injured against his parents' consent, without legal consent or authority, and is suffering as a result. So I'll allow Ms. Duarte here to speak a little bit further about the plan. First of all, I want to speak out for my son and as a parent. Um, my son was offered a pizza for, a, for an exchange of vaccine. Uh, he came home and I remember asking him, how was your day? He said, Mom, I got a shot today, COVID shot. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, they offered me pizza. And they also had him sign a consent in front of them, which one of the ladies told him to sign my name and sign his name. So that's where, uh, it, honestly, all this is painful for me because my son's health is not, it's not good. Um, since he was a baby, he had a uh, bleeding disorder and, you know, I asked my, he couldn't breathe well, so this vaccine affected him more. He's not the same anymore. He's um, lacking of, you know, rest. He doesn't sleep well. He uh, doesn't do exercise the way he did. It's not, he's not normal to me. He doesn't, he can't be out there for like 30, 20 minutes doing exercise when he's already, you know, short of breath, tired. And what worries me a lot is the constant bleeding that he has and his root, his hands. Sometimes he wakes up with a lot of bruises. And I'm asking, where am I gonna get this help? Where is this help gonna come? I need the help to, you know, get my son a better health, you know, provider. And I, I'm just reaching out and I'm asking for help. And I mean, to me it hurts that they, you know, accepted this, you know, without me writing my name in a piece of paper, it makes me feel like really left out. It makes me really sad. You know, they took over one, you know, major part. Yes. And um, I'm asking for help. I'm really reaching out and I need the help. The school has not called me. Not even once. I have no communication with them, and I'm really asking. You know, I'm, I'm asking for the help. Do we have any questions that we want to ask specifically, or anything? Yeah, you said the loss. Another lawsuit has been filed. What was the first one? Uh, we're the same law firm that sued the. We were the first firm to sue the Los Angeles Unified School District to challenge their vaccine mandate. That was it. So what is this, what is the new lawsuit uh, alleged and uh, when will you file it? So uh, in any uh, claim that, and then this is important for people to know, that when you are bringing a claim against a government actor in the state of California, you must first file a tort claim or a government claim and you give the government an opportunity to resolve. And this is the reason also why we were very quiet about this claim. We were, we were loud about her case and what happened in Moises because he was injured and something like that should never happen. A 13-year-old signing, forging his mother's signature to get uh, vaccinated at school without her knowledge or consent uh, in exchange for pizza because of coercion and, and bribery and harassment. So we were very um, vocal about the story because we wanted to prevent something like that from happening again. But after we, she retained us and we filed the complaint, we are very respectful of the district and the school. We're very respectful of our clients and this process, the very critical process, and we opened the opportunity 
to resolve this claim with the district and the school privately, but they didn't even respond. They have three options, accept a claim, reject a claim, or not respond at all, and when you don't respond, we are allowed to interpret that under the law, under the government code section, as a rejection of our claim. So that was just a few days ago. Now we will, are preparing our lawsuit, we'll be filing it next week, because these injuries and these damages need to be redressed. That's well, the school district. You mentioned district. the fact that it was against the permission of the law. Yes. You also indicated that a doctor had given her information that such a vaccine would be contraindicated. What did the doctor know about the young man's health that told him, that told her, wait a second, you shouldn't give a shot? I'll let her explain that. Yeah. That's, okay. that's, um, that's a critical Yes, um, actually, I wasn't ready to give him the vaccine. The doctor was not, or we didn't have this plan because of his health. So we, I mean, I didn't have plans to vaccinate. And I think earlier she had mentioned that at the, as a child, I think it was around two years old that he started having breathing and bleeding issues. We believe they're asthma. I am not um, indicated to be talking about his medical, uh, I'm not the appropriate authority to be speaking about his medical conditions. But since he was young, he had asthma, asthma, breathing issues, and bleeding issues. So this was something that they were not prepared to give him because there were concerns about myocarditis, about bleeding issues. And so she and her doctor had decided not to give him the shot until they knew more information about the vaccine. And just for the record, and I, she has shared this many times before, so I don't feel bad sharing it, but Ms. Ms. Duarte is vaccinated against COVID-19. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is not an anti-vax case. This is about parental rights, about having the ability to protect your children and to make the best decisions for your children based on information only you as a parent know. Because your 13-year-old child or 15-year-old child, because Senator Weiner is presenting a bill that will allow 15-year-olds to consent to vaccines at public school clinics, your 15-year-old doesn't know about the hives that they experienced at six weeks old or the seizures that they had after their 12-month-old vaccinations. They don't know critical information that is necessary to get the requisite legal informed consent to vaccines. That's what this case is about. Hope I answered your question. So just, just to be clear, <laughs> just, just to be clear, uh, what will the uh, lawsuit allege? What will it say? What will, what, will the, what will the claim say? Tell you the claims because it's included in our form. The claims will describe generally what happened, how he was vaccinated at a school vaccination clinic that was promoted and run by the Los Angeles Unified School District and Barack Obama Global Preparation Academy. It will describe all the facts that led up to the vaccination, him forging his, his mother's signature and receiving the vaccination, the injuries that he suffered ever since. We will be asserting and alleging claims of assault and battery, medical battery, absence of consent, violation of informed consent, treatment contrary to patient's will, fraud, misrepresentation, negligence, negligent hiring and supervision, intentional infliction of emotional distress, coercion, violation of the California Constitution, violation of the prohibitions of human experimentation, child endangerment, child abuse, because that's what this is, and any other causes of action that are reasonable, reasonably inferable from the facts. We'll continue to do our investigation. What, what's the school district policy on the vac vaccine, vaccination? Well, we were successful in the Los Angeles Unified School District's uh, the first lawsuit that was filed. We have uh, other another firm, Anson, Anilin, and Korn out of San Diego also filed a similar lawsuit against the LA Unified School District. Our mutual efforts against the LA Unified School District challenging their COVID-19 vaccine mandate policy uh, forced uh, the district to postpone enforcement not once but twice. So we got them to postpone, and then finally the LA Unified School District Board voted just a few weeks ago to align with the state and wait until July, excuse me, 2020, I believe it was July 2022, but wait for the state to mandate COVID vaccines. But just the other day, Judge Beth Loff, the judge in our case, actually reversed his ruling and issued a final ruling declaring the vaccine mandate illegal. As of right now in California, at least certainly in Los Angeles, any district that attempts to pass a, a, a mandate or resolution that forces children to receive the COVID-19 vaccination as a condition to in, uh, continued in-person learning, uh, that resolution, that mandate will be declared null and void. So that's right now there's no uh, COVID-19 resolution except the LA Unified School District still has not retracted. So we are working with the district right now to get them to issue a formal retraction because the judge just declared that it was illegal. Constitutional and void. Did you address the 
866 again because supporters of 866 will say minors 12 and up can already consent to HPV vaccine Absolutely. and hepatitis uh, B vaccine. So why should they be able to make a real decision on that? Can we get this to our case? Sure, absolutely. Um, so I, I feel like there are two questions uh, that need to be addressed when we talk about Senator There are actually two questions that need to be addressed when uh, analyzing Senate Bill 866. That's Senator Scott Wiener's bill that would reduce the age of consent. Originally, he wanted to reduce the age of consent to vaccines to 12. And then after serious pushback from family, uh, families in California, as well as his colleagues in the legislature, he amended it to make it 15. Two things, Senate Bill 866 is illegal on its face. There was a similar bill out of the District of Columbia that actually reduced the age of consent to vaccines to 11. That was passed, I think, in July 2021. Uh, in District of Columbia, the federal district court already declared that that kind of law is void because it violates federal law. And the federal law I'm referring to is the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act of 1986, passed by Ronald Reagan. That federal law applies to any state. It will apply in the United States and California. So if this bill passes, we'll be, we will be challenging it on the same grounds we anticipate that the California federal district judge will follow a similar ruling and, and mentality because the federal law is a federal law and no state law can violate or conflict with federal law. So number one. Number two, your question about you know children can get consent to vaccinations in other scenarios. In California, minors can consent to treatment without their parents' knowledge or consent for sexual reproductive health, for mental health, and for substance abuse. What I would like to say is, you know, I'm new to this fight, our firm is new to this fight, we would absolutely be challenging bills such as these that allow minors to consent to vaccinations without their parents' consent because it does violate federal law. So I can't tell you why no one else has made that challenge in California, but we're prepared to do that. Number two, a child who is, for example, using drugs or currently experiencing anxiety, depression, suicidal ideations, can go to the doctor and explain to the doctor what is actually going on right now today, what kind of drugs I'm using, where I'm getting them, how it's affecting me. They can talk about what is causing the anxiety, the depression. They can talk about their sexual activity with the doctor. So they can be an active participant. They have actual knowledge of present day circumstances and the facts leading up to that tre treatment. That's very different than me being a healthy 12 year old or 15 year old going to my doctor and not having any idea about your medical condition or your history or the important facts and circumstances that are necessary to inform that decision whether you should get the vaccine today. So it's very different to receive treatment that you are currently experiencing symptoms of, symptoms of than asking for a vaccine that relies on information from your from your infancy. So are you saying a 15 year old kid is not capable of knowing that or getting that information about a vaccine side of that? Well, I would suggest that if a 15-year-old is going to go get a vaccine without their parents' knowledge or consent, that they probably don't have the relationship with the parent to say, hey, I'm going to go get a vaccine without your consent because you won't let me. Will you please tell me about what happened to me when I was six weeks old or six months old or 12 months old so that I can go get that vaccine? I don't think that there's going to be this dialogue. And what people need to realize is in Senate Bill 866, the definition of vaccination uh, licensed vaccine administrator is not just the pediatrician. So assuming your child would even take their scooter, take it down to the doctor's office, make an appointment with the pediatrician, review his or her charts for the last 15 years and make an informed decision about the vaccine and whether they should get it. Your child will be going to a CVS, will be getting a Gatorade and a Snickers, and will also be getting the vaccine because they just want to play football again. They just want to go to prom. They just want to walk in graduation. And that's the type of illegal fraud, coercion, and undue influence that is really endangering these children. They're not making free, voluntary, consensual decisions, which is critical and necessary in California to give informed legal consent. Can I ask Mr. Arte, when your child turns 15, should he be able to make that decision to get his own vaccine? Um, as you're asking me as a parent? As a parent, when your child turns 15? No, I wouldn't allow it. He shouldn't be able to do it on his own? No. Can you, can you explain why? I can explain why because uh, his health condition. Uh, first of all, I knew in the beginning you know, when he was born uh, the, all the problems he has. 
So if I already know all the problems he has, why am I gonna let him allow, you know, allow him to get that shot? You know, uh, definitely no, because he's, he's capable mentally. I don't think he's ready to make that decision. May, may I add on to that very quickly? Look at that um, Again, if we were talking about children who were not being pressured by teachers, asked in class about their vaccination status, pressured and bullied by their teachers and peers, why are you vaccinated? Why are you playing football anymore? Why are you playing volleyball? Why are you doing cheer? Just get back to normal. Just get the shot. Who cares? We're being offered pizzas at pizza parties. It's not a vaccination clinic. This is a pizza party at school. We would be talking about a very different thing, but what's happened here is that we've had two years of children being pulled in and out of school, masked and unmasked, denied the ability to be in person with their teachers and their peers and their friends, being able to be on the cheer thing, to, to be able to do anything that makes them normal and happy and have any connection. You remember what it's like to be a 15-year-old. This is not voluntary consent. Unless you, you as well, I don't know how old you are, or your 15-year-old walks into the doctor's office and says, I'm afraid of COVID-19 for these five reasons, I understand the vaccine. I've read the vaccine insert. I understand the risks, which we don't even know because they're still being released by Pfizer. And I am terrified of that virus and I want this vaccine in my body because I'm scared of that virus and I want to protect myself. Anything other, anything else. I want to travel. I want to play baseball. I want to see my grandparents. I want to go back to school in person. Any other reason is not voluntary, legal, informed consent, and it's illegal. So we need to put this in perspective. This isn't normal times, this isn't 2000 when there was no pandemic and there wasn't this back and forth in between schools and depriving children of a normal childhood. They are desperate to get back to normal and that includes taking an experimental new vaccine that they don't even know what, how it will affect them. It's a big difference. What are some of the ailments that the child is suffering? I know she's kind of hinted toward uh, lethargy and uh, bruising. Can you talk specifically about what the child has uh, suffered from? I actually can't, and I think she touched on it very lightly, but again, he did have these uh, these conditions when he was younger. They had resolved themselves, and then recently they have restarted again. He's under the uh, care of, a, of an expert medical team to honestly try and save him and to prevent this from getting worse, but no, at this time we're not available or able to talk about How that. How do you prove that these ailments are from the vaccine and not just the occurrence of the original because they had they had resolved themselves already for several years and it, it reinitiated immediately after the vaccine. Right. Yeah. Sure. I am um, have one more thing to say that I think is very important, which is um, important about us doing this today is I want to caution California families. If you think that this is only gonna to happen to Ms. Duarte, this is only gonna to happen to our other clients, the Villanueva family, we are representing and getting calls from a lot of Latino families in California who are being targeted by these policies and are being disproportionately affected by these policies. But if you as a California resident think this is only gonna to happen to the Latinos or the immigrants and the minorities in the community, you have another thing coming. Because right now the California legislature is on spring or summer break. And they resume session on August 1st. And there are five bills, five bills that they are considering right now to make our public schools, public health care centers, number one, that's Assembly Bill 1940, to reduce the age of consent to vaccines to tw uh, 15, excuse me, that's Senator Wiener's Bill 866, to then allow minors where they are allowed to consent to medical treatment to seal their medical records. That's Senate Bill 1419, that's Senator Becker's bill. So now where your child can get mental health, reproductive health, substance abuse health, or a vaccine of 866 passes, they'll be able to seal their medical records. So even if you are unfortunately lucky enough, like Ms. Duarte here, to find out that your son was illegally vaccinated without your consent, your child will be able to seal their medical records. So when you call and you say, Moises is bleeding, something's going on, I don't know what's happening. If Senate Bill 1419 passes, the doctor will have to say, I'm sorry, Ms. Duarte, I'm not allowed to talk about that. I don't know what you're talking about, and you will not be able to have access to their medical bills. So we have 1940 is going to make schools public health centers. 866 will reduce the age of consent to 15. 1419 will seal your child's medical records. And then we have also 
Um, if you're thinking, well, their doctor will protect them. The doctor at the campus, assuming they don't go to the pharmacy, the doctor will protect them. The doctor will give them advice about the COVID-19 vaccine. Assembly Bill 2098 is currently being considered, which will penalize doctors for giving any recommendations contrary to the COVID-19 uh, CDC FDA narrative. So that's Assembly Bill 2098. So we have a perfect storm. If any of these bills passes, pass, excuse me, you as a parent are sending your children to the gauntlet, sending them to schools. You're sending them into public health centers where you don't even have the ability to access their records, speak to the doctor, or even rest assured that the doctor taking care of them will render individualized care specific to your child. It is a huge issue. Parents in California need to wake up. This is, this, this is a horrifying warning to the future of California if any of these five bills pass once uh, the California legislature starts back up August 1st. Absolutely. Nicole Pearson, attorney, fax law, truth, justice. Maribel Duarte, M-A-R-I-B-E-L, last 